not serious. It's not just a dance. Safety is a skill that you have to think about ahead of time and practice over and over again. Woodworking does have risk and working in the shop you are assuming those risks, working in our class activities. So as a result, your parents have to sign a permission set for you to participate in those activities. Student safety is the number one priority in a class. If you're not sure, ask one of us or you can even ask another student to help you out. Let me repeat that. Safety is our number one priority. When we are in the classroom, I don't care about your grade. I don't even care about your project. When you walk in those doors and you have 10 fingers on your hands, when you walk out of there, that's what I expect to have happen, and that's the success. The grade and the project will take care of itself. Even a momentary lapse of judgment can suffer a consequence you're going to have to live with for the rest of your life. Happened to me. Me too. Even me. Nobody is immune from getting hurt in the shop. It happens far too fast for that. You can't react to it. So if we can't react to it, all we, gotta, all we can do is prevent it. All projects must be approved by the instructor to be worked on in the shop. There is a dress code in the shop. Make sure that you're dressed appropriately each and every time you come in. Make sure you tuck in your shirt, roll up your sleeves, and if you've got any jewelry, especially like necklaces and bracelets, make sure you take them off. Now let's look at a realistic simulation. What you're seeing here is a realistic simulation. The board is supposed to be the operator's arm pushing a board through the saw. And if you notice, just the wind from the saw blade is moving the hoodie sleeve or sweater sleeve. Holy cow! Look how fast that grabbed that. He was able to get his arm free? How? I don't know. But if you take a look at it, that's a deep gouge. You're going to end up on your way to the emergency room via ambulance. So don't wear long sleeves. Tie back any long hair. Well, would gloves be any safer? Ah, uh, you guessed it. We're not going to wear gloves at the machines either. Now let's talk about your footwear. You always want to have a closed-toed shoe. That means no sandals. Just in case something like this were to happen. Ha! <laughs> you might want to wear a boot. It's never a good idea to wear things at the machines such as watches, rings, necklaces, or any other kind of jewelry. They can get caught in the machines just as quickly as clothing, if not even quicker sometimes. It's like the old adage says, take off the ring, not the finger. What do you think about earbuds? Should they fall under jewelry or is that a distraction? I think we should probably cover it under both. So in other words, if it's got the old school ones where it's got the string, it's got to go in, in their shirt so that way they don't get caught on the machine? Absolutely. Hey, hey! What are you doing? protection must be worn at all times when working in the shop. Even hand tools can cause possible threats to your eyes. If you're working in a loud area, hearing protection is a good idea. It's a good idea in a very dusty environment to always wear a dust mask, especially if you're prone to allergies or any asthma or any type of respiratory illness. Horseplay in the shop will not be tolerated. Hey, 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 hey! Rodway! Come here! McKinney! You'll most likely be removed from the class if it happens. Yeah! Keep hands clean at all times. Keep the floor and ground around you for free of all clutter. If you spill something, clean it up right away. Remove all nails and other sharp objects, even if you're throwing it away in a trash can, for the safety of others. Even sawdust can be slippery, like liquid on concrete. Clean up.
clean up. Everybody, let's clean up. Clean up. When you hear up, that song playing, up, it's time to stop what you're doing, finish anything, that, finish up anything that you're working on, and start cleaning up. Take any tools that you have checked out of the tool room, take those back, and then start on your assigned cleanup. Even if you didn't work in that area, you're still expected to clean it up. Just in case this doesn't make any sense, here's a little video we're going to show you. And there actually is a question on your assessment quiz about this video, so be sure to watch it all the way through. Due to copyright restrictions on YouTube, we aren't allowed to show the video on our YouTube channel. However, if you're in class, we could just click on the link. So therefore, I'm going to summarize what the video would say. And again, there is a quiz related to these three rules on your assessment for general safety. When you hear the song, clean up rule number one is clean up when you're instructed to do so. Secondly, rule number two, put things away in their proper storage location. That goes for your projects. That also goes for your tools. And finally, rule number three, once you're done with the first two and the shop is not done, help another unit out or another area out because what will happen in our shop is the drills will get bombarded the week we're drilling the holes. Then the next week, all the saws will get bombarded while we're doing the finish work and trim work, but the drills won't. So I would expect the drill group to help out the saw group once the drills are taken care of. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, email your instructor for questions. But again, cleanup rule number one, two, and three are posted on the screen. Keep the work area organized. It makes it easier to find tools when you need them. Pay attention to the cutting edges of tools when you're setting them down. Shop policy is to check out tools from the tool room. Hey, I uh, need me a pad sander. Yeah. Always return tools back to their proper storage locations. And if you have to set a tool down, put it in a place where it won't get knocked off the table or someone trip over the cord. Be sure you're using the correct tool for the task and job that you are doing. If you're not sure, or don't hesitate to ask an instructor or another student. When you use the wrong tool, it can damage the tool, ruin the work, or even worse yet, injure you, the operator. What's wrong? I think the spring may be broken. Oh, just put it away in the tool room and that way you don't get in trouble for breaking it. Should we tell the instructor? Report any and all broken tools to your instructor. Chances are you won't have to pay for it. I can't remember the last time we've charged a student for a broken tool. If we ever have. Because they just, they wear out over time. Make, make sure you're using a tool that has the proper blade and the blade is sharp. The most dangerous tool is a dull tool. Be sure to check the cords for splits, breaks, cracks, and that the tools in good working order. Keep in mind that you guys are the ones who come in close contact with these tools far more than we do, so therefore you're the ones who are going to be able to see that. Let us know. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Never towards yourself. Always go away from yourself. There you go. Good job. One of the most famous television woodworkers and an icon in the TV woodworking industry is Norm Abram. He's the host of New Yankee Workshop and a co-host on This Old House. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety protocols that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there's no more important safety rule than to wear these, your safety glasses. So what that means is we're talking about general safety, just shop safety overall. However, each particular tool has a set of safety guidelines, procedures, where to stand, where to put your hands, where the switches are. Those need to be followed along with these general safety protocols. So keep that in mind when you're using tools every day in the shop. 
And of course, you also need to be aware of your surroundings. Surprises are usually fun, but not while you're working. When working with any power tool, you need to always pay attention to the task at hand. If a distraction happens to arise, you need to train yourself to ignore it or turn off the machine and back away before addressing that distraction or concern. Be alert at all times. Sometimes a quick turn of your head just before you begin can prevent an unintentional distraction. So we, we talked earlier about earbuds being in and talking about them later and here it is. It's later. Both earbuds? Not a chance. Well, how can they listen to music while they're working? Well, they really shouldn't be, but if they are going to, only one earbud at a time, so that way they can hear what's going on around them. Good idea. And do not abuse a tool's power cord by using it as a carrying handle or to pull a plug out of a socket. Hey, I need a sawzall. Be sure to carry the tools with all the sharp edges down and away from your body. Now before plugging in a power tool, make sure the lock on switch is in the off position. Make sure you turn that off dude. Wait for it to stop. Use all guards, push sticks, and other safety devices. They're there for a reason. Some tools require the student to have a setup checked each and every time they use the tool by an instructor. This prevents possible damage to the machine or the student's material, it also possibly helps to prevent injury to the what student. What do you mean? I need a soap check. Everything looks good. Over the guard. Working speed is the rate at which the tool can do its intended job properly and safely. This will vary between tool and material. So follow the manufacturer's recommended instructions or check with your instructor if you are unsure. Can't you hear the motor? It's binding yeah. up on you. You're going too fast here. Remember working speed? Should not. What, should I go slower then? Well, if you go too slow, what's going to happen there? You're going to get burn marks, right? So should I go faster? Then you might get kickback. You got to listen to the tool. Be sure to wait until the blade is completely stopped before walking away from a machine or setting it down if it's a portable machine. Don't ever remove those little small pieces that are next to the blade. Let them sit, shut the machine off, and wait for the blades to come to a complete stop. Doing? It's got two handles on it. Well, how am I supposed to hold the board? Clamp it down. Oh. Clamp your material in a vise or other appropriate holder. Attempting to hold your work and the tool at the same time is not a safe combination. 
By clamping your work, this allows for both hands to be on the tool and gives you more control of the operation. Hey, Marines, come here. Is this better? What's that old adage about woodworkers and clamps? You can never have enough. Where in the world did all the clamps go? I had to make sure it was tight. What are you doing? Kickback is a sudden reaction to a pinched, bound, or misaligned blade causing the work or sometimes the tool to uncontrollably come back towards the operator. This is not limited to just stationary power tools as it can happen with portable power tools also. One new vocabulary term that is going to come up in the shop class is called margin of safety. It is the minimum safe distance your hand or any part of your body should be from any cutting blade or cutting bit. Anytime you're cutting a board, we have a 12 inch rule. Anything less than 12 inches requires instructor approval. When the job or the material is large enough that you need assistance, be sure to communicate with your partner so that way there's not contradiction of efforts causing someone to get hurt or material or tool to get damaged. Hey Turner, come here. What's up? It's never a good idea to carry a heavy object alone. However, since the industrial arts classroom is a unique situation, we do not want you carrying long objects alone, even if they're lightweight. Because of the amount of people around, it increases the risk of someone getting hit. Anytime you're using anything that is flammable, please read the instructions and make sure that you dispose of it properly and make sure that all things are closed and put away in proper containers. To use a fire extinguisher correctly, remember the acronym PASS. All right, I'm going to try out the PASS method right now. Here I go. I'm pulling the pin, aiming, squeezing the trigger, sweeping side to side, and sure enough, success. But the best fire extinguisher technique you can learn is when not to use one. If the fire is past the very beginning stages and getting bigger, you should get out while you can. Elizabeth Leamy, ABC News, Mawa, New Jersey. If you happen to get a cut or an injury, please notify the instructor. We've got a first aid kit. No matter how minor the injury, we can give you a band-aid or even send you to the nurse if necessary, but... What if you cut off an arm or a leg? Don't bleed on the tools. I don't think a band-aid's gonna work. <laughs> most of all, guys, we want you to have fun in the class, but staying safe is most important. You got anything to close up with? Number one priority. Stay safe, have fun. Let's get go make some sawdust. Uh, uh.